Greetings again, AP Calculus AP students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School for what I promised to be a very short video that's just going to cover our second example from topic 5.2, which was all about the extreme value theorem. But if you re remember watching the previous video, we talked about a lot of other different concepts that tie into this. I always think about topic 5.2 as not an exceptionally long topic that needs a lot of practice per se with problems, but it sort of is the gateway that opens up the rest of the ideas that permeate all throughout unit number five. And I think I've titled this video pretty well. We have a tricky multiple choice question. Let's take a look at it. So as you can see, we have a stem here in example two that says the function f is defined on a closed interval zero to one, and it satisfies this sentence f of zero equals f of one half equals f of one. On the open interval zero to one, f is continuous and strictly increasing. Which of the following statements is true? And you need to interpret this as a little bit more specifically as in which one of the following statements is true because there can only be one answer. So we need to be able to show that three of these are essentially false or could essentially be false under these conditions. So I always suggest and as I did in my last video that you know students typically across the world are very visual. Mathematics is it's a very visual kind of discipline. I think once you can see what's happening, you can start to understand the concepts just a little bit easier. And so I would probably suggest that we attack this problem in that visual manner. So we could attempt to draw this function. Now they don't give us a whole lot of information other than the fact that uh, it's defined on this zero to one interval as such, so it doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, of domain here. And we know that f of zero and f of one half and f of one are all the same value. Now it doesn't matter what those values are, so maybe I might decide to put them say right about here. That's a fact. We know that those three things are true. But then something kind of strange comes our way. It says that on the open interval 0 to 1, f is continuous and strictly increasing. So that's where things get a little strange because we think that we, we've got to connect these three dots with something that's continuous, but that's not what this says. We just have to draw a graph that's increasing and continuous. But the fact is, is those attributes only need to be true on the open interval 0 to 1. And that's the trick. That's the catch. So you could define some open circle. And I guess when I say define, I mean, that's kind of a strange word because it's not defining anything. It's not defining f of 0, that's for sure, because f of 0 is up here. But we're just going to put an open circle there so that we can increase from that point and continue to do so until we got to some value that is not defined, say, for f of 1. So you can make this curved. You can make it straight. That really doesn't matter much. Maybe I draw something along those lines. And I think I have actually depicted visually what's really happening. And then therefore, the door opens a little bit to be able to answer some of these questions. Because part A says, well, f has to attain both a minimum and a maximum value. And that's not true. That is not true. Now, some of us might think, well, doesn't that refute the extreme value theorem? Because doesn't the extreme value theorem say that f is going to have a max and a min on this interval 0 to 1? Yes, it does, if your function was continuous on the closed interval 0 to 1. And that was never a thing. We only said that our function was defined on a closed interval. And there is a difference between being defined on a closed and being continuous on a closed. And so essentially, we can refute part B because f doesn't have to contain a min, 
but not a max, and f doesn't have to contain a max, but not a min. So all three of these looks like they are refuted, which means d better be true, and that says that f attains neither a minimum nor a maximum value. And that indeed is what's happening with problem number two. Anyway, I hope this helps. We'll see you next time.